everyone, and welcome back to another episode on the Drebel server. Now, a lot has happened, I feel like, but it also happens when I don't make an episode very often. So let's have a look and see what changed. We still have our shops, but it now has these awesome Christmas banners and all the chests have a Christmas skin on it. Can I call it a skin? I don't know, but we're selling emeralds, or toys and dying, eyes, name tags, and the pearls, saddles, 17 of them, that's quite a lot, and with the roses, wood, and a lot of zombie heads. <laughs> um, because there's some new enchantments in the game, so I have the heading on my sword, which gives me a lot of zombie heads. Then we have all these enchanted books as well, and this cool little guy. Um, and you saw the other armor stand as well at the start, and um, that's from the armor stand tools plugin that we have. Now, I'm not only selling stuff, but I'm also buying shelka boxes. So for 2000 each, and I'm selling food and stuff. And then we get a lot of new pets because I had a pet rabbit for a bit, but I lost it. So I had to kind of compensate with all these new pets. So this was my pet rabbit, but we got a lot of noise complaints from him. So unfortunately he had to go. But I needed these weather roses, so he was a good pet for a while. Benny is still here though. But yeah, the pet rabbit isn't. Instead of pet rabbit now though, we have this guy. I can't remember his name exactly. Um, and I decided to put all these acacia trees here because when they're not in the savannah, they're so green and they look so nice. I'm trying to see what this guy's name is, but I can't quite see it. Oh, right. Yes, I have too many zombie heads, so I decided to make a nice big stack of them. And it goes all the way up to build height, which is... A lot. It goes on forever. Okay, so yeah, there is the top. So if you stand here, it's a 255, it says. But it said I couldn't put another head on it, so this is really the max. But then I can't see this guy's name and I can't remember what it is. I guess there's only one way to find out. Let me get my silk pickaxe out, because then I don't break the leaves. Make sure I use the right one. Yeah, he's not the friendliest of pets. But, I mean, he's very low maintenance, so... Definitely recommend it. Now, I still can't see his name. Just, I guess I have to go in. Right, Boris. <laughs> right, Boris, that's what it was. So his name is Boris. And he lives here now. Ooh, yes. And we also have this cool stuff that we can get from the crate. Um, this rainbow wool, which I really like. Now, this hasn't changed much. We have our honey system here we have the chests and stuff uh honey is accessible through here so in here i can basically top up the bottles of well just glass bottles and then once it's the beehive is full it will detect it and it will fill up the bottle and then it will go and trigger through that hopper that we saw earlier and then the rest hasn't changed much. I put some slime fun here and then I put gravel above it because then if I middle click 
on the gravel. I don't have to go into my inventory to grab the next stack of gravel. And yes, I still haven't moved the nether portal. Now this is sort of the chests that I put down for slime fun stuff. But it is quite tedious, so I haven't done that much with it, to be honest. Now, up here we still have our villages, and I dug out this massive hole over there. <laughs> so we have some space to um, build farms and whatnot. I've increased the size of my nether farm a bit, and it's right next to this rav small ravine. And then over here is where iron golems can spawn and I can kill them. And then sometimes I'll get a, a basic circuit board, I think it's called. And sometimes I can't quite reach them, but it's fine. <laughs> Just need to hit them once and then they drop down. So I can kill them myself. And... Um, a lot of the stuff just going into my inventory because I have the telekinesis. Yeah, telekinesis enchantment on my sword. And for farms it's not the greatest thing, but for when just heading out and killing things, for everything to just go immediately into your inventory is quite nice. Now, if I don't feel like killing them, I also have lava here, so I can just press the button and the lava will kill them for me. Then, uh, that hasn't changed other than that there is a massive amount of villages in the middle there. I don't know how this keeps happening, but they just sort of multiply to infinity. Now over here I have it made so all my carrots collect at the top here now. So previously there was a hole down here where I had to go down to collect the carrots and for to pick up villages. But I don't need to really pick up any more villages. So I closed it off and built a system so the carrots are transported to the level above. See, loads of villages, they just keep piling up, and sometimes I just have to clear things out a bit. Because I don't think it will help server performance. Patch that back up. And somehow I'm missing a block. I guess we'll just do it. Yeah, I'm really missing it. I don't. I would sort of expect there to be another endless block, but. Did I just place the button wrong? Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, so basically I've put buttons everywhere to make it spawn proof. And I have a cactus farm here. And sometimes. Uh, oh, yes. No, here there's also a lot of villages just piling up. Like, I don't see any villages, but they're on the beds, of course. Now, over here is my library enchanting room, so I did some more armor stand stuff. And got some of the new enchantments that I'm not really sure yet if I'll use or not. And then, um, I used Ruby's head for a statue. Because it looks like she's like scared of the zombie or something, I don't know. And then here is my blaze spider farm. Now I put these trapdoors up there just so that when they do climb up I can still kill them. Um, I used to have the blaze farm over here but it was a bit far away so I would really have to stand next to it in order for blaze to spawn but that didn't quite work. Then those hallways are for um, just to see where my claimed land is. So basically I have all that space to still clear out if I want to and need more space. Then here is the blaze rods and cave spider farm. And I've made some mod modifications and I think it works 
quite well now. And so I went to the nether to get some blaze spawners because I really wanted to get a lot of XP to unlock the stuff from Slime Fun. But now I have <laughs> quite a bit unlocked and I still haven't done much with it, so... And then it's right next to these zombies that also give XP. And... I can sell the zombie flesh, flesh to the villagers. And I can sell the zombie heads to the other players on the server. <laughs> so as you can see, there's another few stacks over here. And then the armor that we get from it, we can just smelt in these blast furnaces. Yeah, so just getting the zombie flesh so we can trade for those... Then over here is my sugarcane bamboo kelp farm. So just like last season I made an all-in-one design. Just because I really like the design. Uh, but sometimes bamboo gets stuck on the edges and then I can just crouch next to it. And this infused magnet will help me get the stuff still so it doesn't just despawn. And this is the cactus farm. As you can see sometimes iron golems get trapped in it and drop. Um, puppies and iron ingots as well and I haven't really been able to figure out a way to stop that from happening yeah so basically how the farm how the sugarcane farm works is with a clock and then over here we also have the slime farm now it doesn't really work well but I think we have enough slime for ourselves. So I was lucky enough to find a uh, what is it called slime chunk, and the iron golem will, and the lava will make them into tiny slimes, and they'll go down the pipe and then fall there, and they either immediately die or they will go down the water, and I can kill them myself. Now here you can see the sugar cane bamboo kelp farm let's actually dive in for a bit yeah so the water pushes the stuff into these hoppers and the hopper will then push it up into an item elevator to go to the top now the reason I try to make the water stream as short as possible is because every 20 minutes or so the um, all the items get removed from the server so if they're not in a container somewhere they just despawn so to get the items into a container as quickly as possible I decided to go for an item elevator rather than a bubble column so, yeah, I would say that that's how that works. So, I think there's like an ESO clock attached to it. We'll see another ESO clock in a bit here. And so that just goes off every once in a while. So it doesn't go off every time something grows. It just goes off every once in a while. Because we do have to keep in mind that we're on a server and... If it would go off too many times, <laughs> I don't think the performance would be great. So this, we sell our rotten flesh and we can sell the glass bottles and then we can get bottles of enchanting. So we get XP from trading and we get XP bottles. So it's all a win-win situation. Ah oh yes, and that's the zombie that I have drive back and forth with everyone's in a valve to try and help with the iron golem raid that was our initial zombie that helped with um, zombifying and curing the villages before 
So last episode I just had the row on the right, but now I also have the row on the left. So these guys have the efficiency 5 and unbreaking 3 enchantment, and they also sell glass for 1 emerald. And then I can change the glass into glass paints and into glass bottles to sell to the other villages. Now the so this is the clock that triggers every once in a while and sends the zombie back and forth. Now the zombie might look a little odd. His name is Freddy. <laughs> um, because I gave him a zombie head. So his head is slightly bigger than of a regular zombie. And is that everything from down here? I think so. So let's head back upstairs. And that was everything here. Made a little pumpkin patch. Um, but then the vanilla server released. So I'm playing on that as well. Now I basically just started the other day, so my base isn't much yet, but I think it's pretty cool. Nice little place. Some fun things to do. And I was really lucky and basically built my base right on top of a mine shaft. So it's not really like a house. But I like the design on it. And then here I keep my cows and I just feed them. And then they breed. And then up here we have little farming area. So this is basically a garden roof. And this weird cow that keeps climbing the ladder, I don't know why. <laughs> and then we found a little doggy. He doesn't have a name yet. I do have a name tag. But I'm not sure if this is what I want to use it for. So yeah, I like sort of the naturey feel of this place. So then up here we have an elevator to go to the top. And it brings it us out to our Mine cart, which travels to our skeleton farm. So when I was in the mine, I was able to find a skeleton spawner, so it was quite close, so I built a track. Now, if I want to explore off, I can just hop out here, but I don't, so I can switch it and continue on to the skeleton farm. Now this isn't crazy efficient, but I thought, oh, let's also make my enchantment stuff here, because if we can get the XP from the skeletons, then we can immediately use it to enchant it. So the skeletons would fall down here and collect some bones and arrows and uh, bows as well, I believe. And then behind this wall is where the spawner is. Now I don't really understand why it is still so bright. There's a torch there, isn't there? I can't really see, but I think there is. Looks like I missed a torch. Now can I get the torch out without dying? Um... Let's just go for it before there's too many of them. Ah yes, there is a torch. Oh, okay, yep, yeah, definitely makes a big difference. It's now a lot darker. Need to try and get out and not get killed. Why is, oh no, I see why the raids were so bad. It was because of that one torch. And am I going to die here? Come on, yes, fight each other, fight each other. Don't kill me. Right, quickly, get out. Get out. <laughs> I don't want to die. No. One heart. That was 
close. Now the server is on hard difficulty, which I think if I were in a single player world, I wouldn't pick hard mode. Although it does guarantee your villagers turn into zombies rather than having them die. Um, I don't know, maybe it's not so bad. I mean, I didn't die, I just had one heart. <laughs> yeah, so I can kill them and then do some enchanting and stuff. I haven't done any enchantment yet because I don't have enough um, books yet. But yeah, that's this section. I don't know if I'll add anything else onto here. Like maybe I'll do the villager trading there as well. But I'll need to get some villages and stuff. And this is basically pure vanilla, so I don't get any bonus from the ranks and stuff. But it is quite refreshing to play on a pure vanilla system. And just this area is so like fun. You can just you run a mow down. <laughs> No need to make an elevator to go down. So I just, it's its so fun. I just keep, keep doing it. So just like jump off. Yeah, good fun. Now, the other thing you can do is obviously use a boat. So let's do that. So I put these lily pads here because it's sort of an easy makeshift bridge, but when playing around with the boat, they're a bit of a pain. How can I? Oh, I hit another one. That's probably good. Oh, I hit that one too. Oh, that other one. <laughs> right, yeah, so. Patching the lily pads up. This is probably better. Yeah. Put the boat down. And down we go. <laughs> Steering while in, in this perspective is very difficult. And yes, I press shift. <laughs> Can I get in the boat again? I can! So, with that, I think we've reached the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and see you next time. Goodbye.